Let's talk about Trevon Diggs, um, cornerback from Alabama. He's a Dallas Cowboy now. I'm going to get into some of his film now, and then later on we're going to talk about some configurations of how we're going to run him, Cheeto, Jordan Lewis, A.B., you know, just um, you know what the future of corner looks like. So, you know, hang around for that to get that information. But now we're going to talk about some film, some things that he does well, things that he does not. Um, and, of course, we're going to be 100% honest here. Trevon Diggs was my fourth corner. I had him behind um, Okuda, Henderson, and Fulton. But I think I think Diggs fits the Cowboys better because what we've learned from the type of corners that the Cowboys drafted is that the Cowboys want physical press man corners because we're going to run physical press man coverage, right? And Trevon Diggs does that a little better too. Um, he does that a little better than, than, than Fulton does. And, you know, I would even say Henderson, um, so what that means to me is in this draft, we're going to be, or at least in this defense, we're going to be um, more physical. We're going to take a lot more chances. You know, we're going to lock guys up. Uh, we may give up some more yards. We may give up some more big plays, but we're probably going to have some more turnovers. And uh, I don't think we're going to bend uh, bend and not break a bit much. So that's interesting. Trevon Diggs, we're going to see him right here lined up. And, you know, we, we're, we're going to see him line up to the outside. We're going to see him line up inside, right? He's more inside now because the formation is, you know, kind of stacked or whatever but um but there still is an outside receiver right there so sometimes we had digs outside sometimes we had him inside um sometimes digs would just you know follow the best cornerback on the team right so you know you know he can play all over the place and that kind of gave me a little bit of optimism because the dallas cowboys do have cornerbacks in place right now with jordan lewis and um you know, Cheeto, right? But the first thing we gonna see from Trevon Diggs is he always gonna get his hands on people. And I think Mike Nolan wants that. I think Mike Nolan and the new Cowboy defense, you know, Al Harris and all those guys, man, we 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 wanna get physical. And I think that helps Cheeto and Jordan Lewis also, right? Um so that's that's something that Diggs is absolutely going to be good at. He's a super super athlete, man. Um, like six one six two combine nerds. Can I get some help with that in my comment section? What his actual uh, combine numbers are? You know his you know his you know measurements and all that. But uh, he's going to get hands on folks, man. He's going to get hands on folks. He's going to be physical. And in terms of his technical abilities, right? He's not the most technical cornerback in the world, but he makes up with that. He makes up for that with his physicality. You see what I mean? He makes up for that because even if he does miss, right? Even if he does miss, he's going to end up um, with great recovery speed, right? Let me move my remote out the way. We got him at the bottom of the screen right here. Take a look at him, right? Boom, boom, boom. I'm going to give you a hand, and we just kind of going to run up field together, player. My technique ain't the greatest. My my feet ain't smooth. You're not going to get a real pretty back pedal out of me, but those are things that can be fixed. Those are things that can be worked on. Diggs is a is a first-year starter, right? And he had like two interceptions on a gang of pass deflections. So what we're going to get from that is – um. You're going to see some mishaps in terms of technique. But the best part about it is that Diggs ain't got to start this year, right? We got corners. Diggs ain't got to start uh, uh, this year. But when it comes time to, you know, um, to pay Jordan, when it comes time to pay Cheeto, one of those guys may or may not get paid. And we'll be sitting pretty in a, you know, situation where we got a corner, where we got two corners. But we'll talk a little bit about that later. Um, digs at the bottom of the screen here. Absolutely. Indubitably. Right. We see him plant his foot going. Um, <clears throat> now was this the tightest of coverages? No, nah, it, 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 it wasn't. But what I wanted to highlight here is when the receiver broke down, we saw how fast Diggs was able to drop his hips and get back into the fight. You see what I mean? Take a look. Boom, boom, boom. Drop his butt. Get back into it. Drive, 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 drive. Now, th this was an incompletion because the quarterback didn't put the, you know, didn't put the ball in the best place. But if the ball was in a good place, Diggs would still be able to kind of make that play with that length. You know what I mean? With that drive ability. You know what I mean? Um, so as a physical prospect, right, as a physical guy that's going to play press man coverage, that's going to be physical with these um, with these um, wide receivers, man, you got to be happy with what you get with Diggs, man. You got to be. Look at it. Look at this. They trying them. They trying them. And we get an interception out of it. Let's see what happens here. He's going to be lined up on the inside covering the slot. Back pedal. Boom, 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 boom. And, and look, the back pedal ain't pretty. <laughs> It ain't the prettiest. He just gonna open up and run. He just gonna open up and run. And that's fine, right? That's fine. He just gonna bail out of there and he's gonna stay in front. 
Look at that speed. He's going to stay in front. And him staying in front enabled him to find the football. He was a former receiver. So if Diggs at any point, being a former receiver, great height, great size, great length, look at he's finding the football right now. What does that tell you, man? He's getting his head around to find the football right now. We bailing out. Diggs identified that, okay, we just going to run upfield. We just going we just gonna boogie down these numbers. Cool, let's boogie down these numbers, right? He's going to get his head around. He's going to find that football, win the foot race, and he's going to be a wide receiver, dog. Fantastic play. How about this play, man? Once again, Diggs lined up on the inside. Uh, let's see what he does, man. Let's take a look at this play. And if you notice, like, the matchup or whatever, like, I kind of like that because this receiver, he is a bigger receiver. So even if you run, even if you run into these teams that want to, you know, um, put bigger receivers to the inside, they want to, um, you know, take their bigger tight ends, displace them and put them, um, put them at a wide receiver type of, um, you know, type of role. And, you know, you, you know, they may be looking for, for a mismatch, but I think, with Diggs, you you know, with his size and his physical abilities or whatnot, I think that he takes away that that mismatch or whatever, right? And this was not a catch. Hold on, let me fix the camera for y'all so we can get a good zoom damn version on the cartel view right here. This was not a catch. Diggs was on his hip. Diggs was on this guy's hip, and he gonna get that hand in there, and he kept fighting even on the ground, right? Even being hip to hip, going to the ground. Diggs fought to get that ball loose right there. You see what I mean? You can still see Diggs down there hand fighting with him. So I like, I like, uh, if I could borrow a Law Nation word for, you know, stuff for uh, tenacity. I like his tenacity, a very tenacious cornerback, man. Big fan of that. A handful of cons, man. Like I said, he doesn't have the best technique in the world. So you may catch him in a situation where he's not 100% trusting himself. Um, he trusts his athletic ability. I think he's he over trusts his his um his physical ability sometimes. And like I said, you can tame that down, give him a little more, you know, give him a little more time, a little more PT. Um he's a first year player, so he can learn. But take a look at Diggs at the top of your screen right here. We'll take a look at this interception, then we'll come back and look at him. Um he didn't do this too too much, but this is a prime example of sometimes him being too physical can work against him. Um but it's fine because all the little issues that you have with them, you can kind of you can kind of fix those. Right. Uh, we're going to get some solid coverage from him, some pretty good coverage. He didn't need to grab the jersey right here. Right. Just going to get Diggs grabbing the jersey a bit. He didn't need to do it. But just the reaction, he ended up doing that. Um, and that could be from a lack of trusting his technique or whatever. But, um, hey, man, all he got to do is like drop his hips and drive on the football anyway. And he would have made that play regardless. Right. Regardless of him, um, regardless of the. Um, position that he was in right he, like he he probably could have made that play anyway he didn't need that small little jersey tug so that's the interception that was taken off the board man it is what it is but Diggs is going to get his hands on footballs man look at him in the duke game look at him versus the lsu game uh just just yeah i think arkansas too he gets hands on footballs man he catches interceptions he gets pass deflections and um you know, I think that's important, man. In this in this defense, we're going to take some more chances to make more plays, but taking those chances, we're going to give up more yards. Now let's talk about how he fits in this Cowboy defense. So let's talk about the Dallas Cowboys corners. In a perfect world, what Vach would do, this isn't what's going to happen, but what Vach would do, this is what your first five guys would look like. Now, we have multiple corners on this team. We got uh, we got Goodwin. We got Kennedy. We got Chris Westry. We got um, my other guy that we sniped from the other team. But somebody got to play special teams. Somebody got to play kickoff and kick return and all that. So don't even think about the back end of the corners. I'm thinking about these first few guys right here. These are the guys that I'm going to focus on, right? So, in 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 Vach's world, Jordan Lewis and Cheeto are going to be your outside corners. Jordan Nova on the left, Cheeto is going to be on, well the defensive left, right? And the defensive right. It 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 shows on your on your, your on your uh, laptop screen or whatever on your phone. However you watch it. But um Anthony Brown, you know, should be playing nickel corner in my personal opinion. Now, what does this mean for Trevon Diggs and Reggie Robinson? It means they probably won't start this year and that's okay. That's okay. These guys are really good. It just, you know, when you, and I say this all the time because I was hating on Cowboy fans for how they was talking about the last year's draft. Sometimes when you're well-equipped on your roster, the the rookies ain't got to start right away. But next year, Jordan Lewis and Cheeto are going to have contract concerns, right? They might not get paid. That's when these two cornerbacks are going to prove to be valuable for you, right? 
Now, let's say one of these guys ends up playing bad. Let's say knock on some wood. Somebody lays down to go ouch. Then you got Trevon Diggs that can come in and play inside and outside for you immediately, right? We showed you the film of that. Um, hey, if you want to throw that rookie in the water, I think he can exist in that water. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's just where we at with that. Reggie Robinson is a guy that's probably going to have to develop a little bit more, but he's another guy that's, you know, that has size that's like six foot, 205 or something like that, six one, six foot. Um, he's a bigger guy, 205. He's longer. He's another one of those physical guys that's going to gamble and take chances just like Trevon Diggs so he's definitely a guy that has to develop and can you know come in and do some damage next year what gives me um some hope with Reggie Robinson not even hope because whoever the hell make the team just kind of make the team but if Reggie Robinson is going to make the team this year he might end up being one of those gunners because he can run on the uh, punt team he could be a, he could be a gunner for you today he can fly you know what I mean? Um, you know, Diggs, you know, Diggs can do some return work too, depending on what you want to do with him. Um, but in terms of my my first few corners or whatever, you ain't got to worry about these guys playing because I think your big three, I put that in quotes, because A B can sit down today. If it's up to me, A B can sit down today, and I'm putting Diggs at damn nickel corner right now. But that's unfair because Anthony Brown has starts in his league at cornerback. So it wouldn't make sense to just start Diggs just off the rip. At least let Diggs earn it in training camp. At least, you know what I'm saying? And Robinson just kind of let him sit around and, you know, develop. But guys like Chris Westry, hey, man, my bad, bro. It's been a cool little run for you. Give me a hug and a pat on the back. My bad, fella, but you 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 got your hands full, player. You got your hands full because not only did we up the size of our of our DBs, but we got big guys that can run. Now, Chris Westray ain't the fastest running guy in the world. He's a he's a tall, long guy, but he ain't the he ain't the best running. You know what I'm saying? So we got some tall guys that can move around a little bit. But this is what you know. This is what we working with, man. Of course, we got Kennedy and. And those other guys that are probably going to have to, you know, be training camp bodies, they're going to have to, you know, run down and tackle on kick return. Whatever we got to do to make our kicking game better than what it was last year. We were 32nd in special teams, man. It's terrible. It was 32nd in special teams. So let's add some speed to that, man. And, and, and um, I feel I feel good about these rookies, man. I feel good about these rookies. I'm super excited. Um what can you look for on the channel moving forward, man? We definitely going to drop some film on Tyler Badass. Stay tuned. Uh, I got some Bradley and I film. I'm going to break down his um, senior bowl footage for y'all, so hang tight with that. And, um, of course, we're going to get into uh, some some Neville Gatmore and some other little things, man. So stay tuned, man. Uh, and, of course, man, these undrafted free agents, man, you know, when we you know when we get on the phone with those guys, you know, can offer some – I can offer some analysis with those guys. All right? Um, I'm going to move on from this. Uh, I got some other film I got to work on. Y'all. Stay tuned and hold it down for the Doski, Wolski, and the Piski Whiskey until the next film session drop, man. Salute. The YouTube Illuminati is taking money away from your favorite content creators, and people often ask the best way to support the channel directly. I tell them that subscribing on my Patreon. Just $1 a month would increase production and the frequency of uploads. Basically, that means more content for you. For less than a bag of almond M&Ms, you can support the channel, call dibs on requests for future videos, and you can have access to Patreon-exclusive material like my throwback film sessions. That's patreon.com slash Lombardi. I appreciate the support. Doski Wolski. Salute.